All right, we want to welcome you guys back to a, another episode of Q&A with Coach Trey. I'm Brandon, and this is Coach Trey with this coffee, this post-Labor mm-hmm. Day run. Yep. Uh, I heard some people talking that they needed a day off from their day off. Was that your case at all over the weekend? Um, no, I was um, I was relaxed. That's good. I had a good relaxing time off. Shot some uh, hoops yesterday, yes. threw the frisbee with my sons, threw the football. Uh, so no, I, I really, really took it easy. So did a, did a run Saturday, but... Didn't race this weekend. That's so, crazy. When is your next race? That's a really good question. I think sometime in October. That's still. I think that's like the question of mm-hmm. the uh, of the hour right now. I so. have no idea because I don't even know. You know, health help from a health standpoint, I'm not sure what I can or cannot do. So yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe October though. If you guys have not been following along, Trey had pretty severe back surgery. Mm-hmm. Was it March or February? It was, yeah, it was beginning of March. Beginning of March. Yeah. Beginning so. of March. Uh, so yeah, I'm surprised you're just even up and walking around. And you're I doing know. more than just walking. So. I am. I am. Although I think I need to do bed. My back's been bothering me in the mornings. I think I, I think it's my bed because that's the only mm-hmm. time that bothers me. So that's good. Need to do bed. Sweet. So uh, this is our uh, once a week Q&A that we do. Uh, and so we're drawing these questions from our Facebook group. So as as always, we definitely want to plug that group. If you guys go to connectrunclub.com forward slash Facebook. Uh, we had lots of folks posting over the weekend, mm-hmm. lots of runs. Some someone, good stuff. Someone just ran their first marathon and it was like 202. Did you see that? Not 202. Sorry. It was uh, first half. First half and it's yeah. 202. I was about to say. First marathon. Wow. That's, uh, that would be incredible. That's impressive. The first half marathon and had like 50 people commenting and liking and stuff. So that's great. You want to go go there, connectrunclub.com forward slash Facebook, join our group. I think we had uh, somebody run the uh, Disneyland half, yeah. if I saw correctly. Yeah, we saw that did the Coast to Coast Challenge. Coast and, to Coast. Uh, we had uh, Gregory. Gregory Barline, he did, uh, I think, two races in one day. Yeah. Did a 5K and a 10K. Uh, we had some other other runners posting some of their some of their good solid efforts over the the weekend, and also we had a little little break in the weather in the morning, starting to get a yeah, little at least on, bit cooler. A little we're, bit. We're outside of Atlanta and mm-hmm. Georgia, so it felt a little bit better. Was it Saturday and Friday? It got yeah. hot again yesterday. But yeah, but still. even and, and hey, my big thing is hey, if you just cool off in the mornings for me a little bit, if we can get from seventy five to like sixty eight, yeah, I'm mean, a that's a big, it's a big, change. big difference. It is. Yeah. So this recording, we normally do these on Thursdays if you guys are following along with us, but we actually pushed this one due to some scheduling stuff. So we're doing it on Tuesday. And um, again, we, we try to do these live and you guys can check us out on Crowdcast as well. So um, there's a link usually in our group. And I think uh, Dr. B is on with us right now hanging out. So if you guys have any questions, you guys are listening to us live and you're on Crowdcast, just make sure and drop a question in below. But Trey, we have several questions uh, that we're going to get answered mm-hmm. and so uh unless you got anything else no i, I am curious uh, dr b if uh, I, wasn't she training for a 50k or a 50 miler she was yeah and i wasn't sure if that has happened yet or not so hey let us know if it's upcoming or whether you have done that so uh, hopefully uh, training is going well for you though yeah, it's on October 29th. Awesome. Coming up. Awesome. Best of luck. Cool. All right. So this question is coming in from uh, Kyla Van Boven. Uh, so she says, I made the decision to skip a 10 mile long run today. Yesterday, I ran an easy five miles, but after running, I felt like I had run a marathon. My legs felt so torn up that my thighs hurt to touch my right calf soles muscles felt strain. Uh, I also felt really sick for about 30 minutes and was way more fatigued than normal by the end of the day. I'm on the Hanson's half training marathon plan, which is pretty rigorous. Uh, I'm assuming it's related to overuse. Any recommendations to how to prevent this from happening again? I'm going to see how I feel tomorrow and hopefully start running again. Will increased sodium intake help prevent this muscle fatigue? I'm concerned that my sodium intake is too low. Well, uh, I I would say uh, very, very good symptoms of overtraining. Uh, I'm not sure how long you've been doing the Hanson's training program. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the Hanson program. The Hanson method, I absolutely love it. I think it's fantastic. Uh, but it, you're you're right. It does require a lot out of you. I think there absolutely could be some nutrition and hydration things there. The thing that gets me is just how sore you are. Uh, here's the thing about a training plan, and I tell this to everybody: is that a training plan is a guide. A training plan is not the gospel. Uh, sometimes your training plan uh, is going to require you, require you to do something different. So uh, don't feel like you have a training plan and it needs to be checked off every single day of the week. A training plan is a guide, and uh, sometimes sometimes the thing that we neglect the most 
and I used to do this as well. My goal when I printed off a marathon training plan was that I did. I posted on my fridge and checked off everyone. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's going to uh, this is going to get me to the marathon. And I began to learn the one thing that is not talked about. And this is where coaching comes in. The one thing that's not talked about is adaptability. Uh, An adaptable plan is the most critical component to a training plan. And that's what that's what training plans typically don't do unless you're working with someone is they don't adapt. And uh, that's probably the most critical component because you have to know how to respond. Uh, and, and just like what you're dealing with here, uh, this this is going to cause you to adapt. And so what does that look like? Uh, I'd say it's going to have to listen to your body. And here's what's not going to hurt you. I know it's going to sound crazy, but taking six days off is not going to is not going to hurt you. It's not going to hurt you a bit. You're not going to lose that much fitness in six days. Now, I'm not telling you to take six days off. But I am. My encouragement to you is that I feel like it is a warning sign Uh, and it is a warning sign that you're you're on the edge. And I I would hate to see you miss out on your half marathon for overtraining. So to me, all of these are are very, very, uh, you know, kind of big warning signals that you are overtraining. So I would take some time off and even maybe ignore some of the of the harder runs and stick with some of the easier runs. So uh, I think it is important to adapt and to listen to your body. And I think this is a case where you need to do that. So I, I would I would recommend just taking a few days and, uh, you know, again, maybe ignoring some of the harder efforts and just concentrate on the easy runs. And I'm not saying you can't run at all, but maybe back down the mileage a little bit, maybe back down the intensity. And then after three or four days, see how you feel and then ramp it back up. And I don't even say go exactly back up to where you were, but maybe you slowly ramp it back up to where you were. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think that's probably going to be your best bet. Again, it's all about adaptability and giving your body a chance to adapt to this. And this is, you know, I don't know what your training was like before you were on this plan. And I don't know how quickly you went into this plan, but that, that's a, it's a good reason what we call base building. The whole purpose to base building, it allows you to be able to work hard later. And so that's an important part as you go into a training plan. That's the, another thing a training plan doesn't tell you. A training plan doesn't tell you whether you're ready for that training plan or not. A lot of people just print off a training plan and think, oh, I'm, I'm ready for this. No, maybe you're not. Uh, maybe you need more base building. Uh, maybe you need more mileage. Maybe you need uh, uh, longer uh, longer time at a specific mileage a week. Maybe you need some more intensity. So I love training plans. I really do. I'm a big fan of training plans. However, uh, training plans are not all created equal because they're not customized and they don't have you in mind. They have just a picture of a runner in mind. They don't have you in mind. And so that's what's important to be able to make sure don't print that plan off and put it on your fridge and just check it off every day. Listen to your body. And I promise you can get to the finish line the same way and you can have success, but you got to listen to your body. That's good. Uh, yeah. Dr. B in the comments is saying uh, sometimes it's hard just to rest and she had to take a month yeah. off in her training. So it's yeah. the hardest part. And, and Dr. B, I, I, and, you, and you know this, uh, the fact is by you taking a month off, you know, you either take a month off or your body will make you take longer term yeah. off. Yeah. That's the facts of life. And uh, Kyla, um, I'll also throw out, there is a Hanson's running plan group on Facebook, like yeah. by yeah. the Hanson's folks. And if you join that and drop that question in there, they'll probably be able to give you some specific advice because it's a lot of the Hanson's actual coaches. Mm-hmm. Um, and we had um, the guy that's running it now. His yes, name just left me. Um, he was on left the running summit with us. Yep. Uh, super nice guy. He was they, great. They, they had a lot of folks down in Rio mm-hmm. they're running. So they uh, they know their stuff. All right, so uh, moving right along. All right, so this question is coming in from uh, Patricia, and she is asking Patricia Evans Best all the way from Weisbaden. Do you think I should say that? Germany? International? I, I say Weisbaden. Weisbaden. That, that, that sounds more German. Yeah, you got to have like sauerkraut. Weiss. Say it. Is it, I think it's Weisbaden. That sounds good. That. All right, so she's entering the Munster Miles portion of a marathon training. Mm. I'm definitely struggling with the battle between the mind and the body. I'm trying to break things up into smaller mental chunks, but I gladly take any and all recommendations of other tried and true mental tricks that help with the long run doldrums. So how do you get through a long run? When you're out there for hours and hours and hours and hours. Patricia, that's a great, 
great question. And uh, I think you have to get creative in my mind. And I love the idea of breaking up into smaller chunks. I know when I have done ultra marathons in the past, I don't even pay attention to mileage. My concentration has been to run from aid station to aid station. I even do that now. Even on a shorter run, I know, hey, I'm just going to run to the elementary school or else I'm just going to run to that next intersection or I'm going to run to this bridge. And so I, I try and break it up that way. I see. I think some other things to do: uh, run with a running partner if you can, and if you can't, try and invite that running partner to come out for the second half. Don't yeah. do the, don't not the first half, not the because in the second half you're gonna be all by yourself, and that's the worst. So, invite a training partner or someone to run, whether it's the last ten miles, whether it's the last five miles, four miles, just something to help break it up. The other thing that I have done for situations like this. Uh, I, I'm again, I'm not huge on listening to stuff, but on some long runs, I will actually maybe listen to something or not listening to something the first half. Maybe I listen to a, an audio book. Maybe I listen to a podcast the first half because I'm just trying to kind of get through it. And then maybe the last few miles of my run, maybe I switch to tunes and give me something to uh, something to help uh, kind of break the monotony up a little bit and maybe finish strong. Uh, so I, I think those are a couple of things for me that uh, that have made a big difference. So what about you? You've been out there for a lot of these runs as well. Anything for you? Uh, that works? I listen to stuff. That's, listen to stuff. That's the big thing. So usually yeah. I listen to either podcasts or sometimes like books because I'm just trying to like forget what I'm doing. So that's my biggest mm-hmm. piece. Yeah. Um, yeah. Usually listen to like when I did, even though it was the Disney marathon, I still listen to stuff because I was running by myself mm-hmm. and I listened to the best practices of disney like it was something yeah. disney related yeah. which i thought was kind of cool um and then stopped and talked yeah. to people but i'm looking through the comments we had a lot of people comment on this um a lot of folks are saying running partners yeah uh several po- folks said they would get their spouse to meet them at certain spots that's a good idea bring water yeah. one person uh let's see it was russell forrest had uh, his wife on a bike so that's a good kind idea of trail him on the bike yeah, people meet them at different points on water stations yeah. to make sure they weren't dying. Ooh, pick a new there. course. Yeah, new course. Do, do something several. new. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always liked that. If I get bored, because I do that yeah, well, all the time with even some of my smaller runs. I just get tired of running the same thing. So pick a new course. Chart something out. Uh, one, uh, at least I had a good one. She heard this on another podcast to focus on just the mile that you're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's almost being mentally present, not like what the past is or what the future is, but just what you are doing right now. So just yeah. kind of being in the moment. So that, yeah. that's a good one, too. That's good. Well, sweet. Um, well, there you go. So if you guys want to listen to a podcast, you can listen to ours, as always. Maybe right. you're running right now. So if you're running right now. Twice a week. Good job. Subscribe. Connect Run Club. Check What's your out. pace? What's your pace right now? Yeah, what is your pace? All right. So uh, moving right along. Um, oh, I just answered the wrong one. All right. So. What is, let's switch this off, sorry. Uh, what is your favorite animal to see along a long run? Or, or, or what is your, this is coming from Melissa. She says okay. she was running in Tennessee. Uh-huh. She says, I love seeing quite a few deer. What's your favorite animal to yep. see on a run? You know what? One that is, I'll get to my my least favorite in just a minute. But I say my favorite. I don't know what it is. And a park that I run at every once in a while, I have a tendency to see turtles. Mm. Turtles just, it's not something you typically see. And I have seen about three or four turtles over at uh, Fort Yargo State Park, which is not too far from us. And I love seeing turtles. It's just something different. You know what I mean? You see all kinds of animals, but I love seeing turtles. Now, I tell you what, I did the Chickamauga Battlefield Marathon, which, you know, that's close up to uh, up to Berry College. I have never seen so many deer in all my life. And There's in fact, the whole race, there. I was freaked out. Like, please do not hit me. Because you know what's really funny? Weeks before, I had I was listening to a podcast in a Cross country runner up in Canada had had a collision with a deer and got knocked out. Jeez! And so I, I've got like this deer, in like the back of my him? head. Yes. Wow. I've got this in the back of my head about this lady getting knocked out by a deer. But I tell you, the craziest thing I ever saw it just scared the daylights out of me. It was like five o'clock in the morning in Athens, Georgia, and I saw a coyote running down the road. And, I mean, he was big and he was fast. And I was like, he was, he had no interest in me, thank, yeah. thankfully. But that was a he little frightening. He would beat frightening. you in a sprint. Uh, he, he would beat me in a sprint. I'm not a, I'm not petrified of snakes, but, yeah. you know, my problem is usually when I see a snake, it's, it's the late. last minute. Yes, I'm like, I'm up in the air. So again, I don't love, I don't hate snakes, but I don't really love seeing them on the trail either. Yeah. So what is your least favorite? 
I could probably guess, but uh, dogs that are not on leashes. Yes. Yeah. It's, they will come after you. It bothers the mess out of me. And, yeah. and every way that we run, there are leash laws and nobody, the worst. And the reason I don't run close to where I live is because of dogs. I have been chased multiple, multiple, multiple times. And so I don't, I sure, you know, I usually uh, drive about 20 minutes away to go to a place where I usually don't have that problem. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just, I can't. Well, here's the thing. I like dogs fine, but when there's an unusual dog and you don't know anything about this dog, you don't know what it's going to do. And I have been, I've had multiple, multiple occasions where I have been chased down. So, in fact, if you follow me on Strava, you'll usually see speed work yes, with dogs. With dogs yeah. Yes. So, if you guys, we know we've got people listening from all around the world. We'd love to know what is the craziest animal you've seen out on a run i've got one this wasn't from a run this was from a bike mm-hmm. and we were in tennessee at some like park i forget what it was but they had like a bike trail uh-huh. and so we riding super slow but then i it had just rained someone in front of me had like like just dropped on all the brakes Stop right in front of me because they were like two black bears, like little baby black bears. And so, like, I like had to put the bike on the ground because I was going to slide into them. They're like little kids, and uh, oh, but there's no mom oh, black bear for well, at least nowhere that yeah, we could see. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. She wasn't too far away. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, I've been chased by dogs. I got chased by dogs on my bike, and what was bad is it was at the bottom of this hill. We we're turning oh, around no. to come back. I mean, it was like straight up. So I mean, you had to like, and the dogs were chasing us. A guy in our office was with me, and it was horrible. They like they kept coming out of like places. It's like one dog would like start barking, and they'd all start. And wow. it was just we had a trail of dogs chasing us. So it was terrifying. Did a did a trail race once where. I was this volunteer said, Hey, make sure and make a lot of noise the uh, the next mile. Somebody spotted a bear up ahead. I oh, was wow. like, That's fantastic. That will keep you going. So. I was like, um, apparently I'm gonna be running very fast this next mile. Yeah, especially if we got any of those ultra trail runners out there. I'm sure you guys have seen some pretty crazy stuff. So mm. uh actually Chelsea Thompson Thompson just uh, comment and she says she saw a goose this morning and they were honk, oh, honking at her. I don't like hey, goose. I, you know what? I, I think I prefer a dog over a goose. I, I am mean. completely, they are absolutely, they will chase you down. Kick them in the face. I hate those things. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a little collapsible uh, kind of steel rod that I use. I carry in my hand I when that. I run out in Jefferson, just because. Hey, I'm telling you, if you if you come to Jefferson, Georgia, you better be prepared for some. Bring dogs. your steel rods. If Bring you're coming your to steel rod. <laughs> hey, I know other people that carry uh, pepper spray. Yeah, and uh, this is someone who my wife runs with. She carries some kind of high pitch thing she keeps in her pocket, supposed to help keep dogs. Oh, like the like where they they can hear it, but we mm-hmm. can't. Yeah. Yeah, I've thought so. about doing that in my backyard. We have dogs that bark probably on cue at about eight twenty each day. People go on walks. <laughs> the dogs across from us start barking, and I want to set up speakers in my backyard and just blare that. Oh, that's crazy. So they would hear it. But. I, I think I think I would agree with Chelsea. I think the, the geese. That's probably my least favorite. Yeah, she just said her grandfather raised ducks and geese, and geese are evil. That is yeah. That is the well truth. said. That's probably gonna well be the said. title of this episode. Geese mm-hmm. are evil. All right. So moving right along. Usually we have a uh, Q and A, not a Q and A, but like a question that you have to vote on. Um, this looks a little bit different. We actually had someone post this for us. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, this one's coming from Gregory, who actually trades doing some um, coaching with. He said that um, basically, do you prefer a race medal or a shirt if you had to choose between the two? Actually, he was asking if you're choosing between two events, which of those, the medal or the shirt and everything else is the same, would make you want to choose it over the other? Uh man, that's great question. Because honestly, you know, one thing I've looked at in the past, I've looked at swag, especially with ultra marathons. Depending upon your ultra marathon, you can get a lot of goodies. I have so I have run races where I got, I think, of course, the shirt and the belt buckle. Then I've also gotten a jacket and then some other stuff. And so I usually look at swag. But here's the thing: I'm not a huge fan of just like a medal. But if I was going to choose one thing, I think I would choose something because I like a medal from the standpoint of something that I can remember yeah. something with. And yeah. so it's not like I wear it or something, but I do because when I see a medal or when I see a belt buckle or when I see something, it, rem- it it's kind of the reminder. It's that token of the of the memory I created there. So, man, we get shirts a dime a dozen. So I, I think my preference is either something that's usable like I have gotten a lot of uh, glasses. Yeah, I like I like I like using a glass. Or I've gotten some hats yeah. from races. I yeah. like to use those. But if I was to, if it was just those two, I would probably even though I probably I'll never 
really use it. It's a nice memory. Having something to sit there, a metal or something, just just as a memory is what I like. Yeah, I'd agree. Because metals, are, I feel like, are harder to throw away. Like, you don't want to. Yeah. But shirts, and once you get to a certain point, you just got so many that exactly. you're just like, it's another shirt. So, yeah. Um, that that memory piece. So, I, I this has nothing to do with running. But so, books now, I do mostly digital just because I like to take notes on them. And that's how I keep them. Yeah. But then we were building some bookcases over the weekend. Me and my wife were. And so, we had unpacked books that have been packed since we moved in like nearly two years ago. And it was fun because I would be like, oh, I forgot I even mm. read this. And it'd be like yeah. all these memories would come back from reading that book. So I feel like it's almost the same way with those metals. Like, especially we've seen great people do these racks, like metal racks, mm-hmm. and where you can yeah. hang up your, your metals and your bibs. And it's not just the metal, but it's like you're going to remember. Like yeah. when I see Disney, I don't just think of the metal. I think of all the, the crazy stuff that happened when I ran it. So. Yeah, and it, I, I'm with you. I think any story that goes along with it, I think about that before I do a shirt. Because a shirt, it's just a shirt. But yeah, if I have something to remember it by, it always kind of prompts the story or memory, especially for like a half marathon or yeah. a marathon, because I don't care how many you run, there's always a story, whether it yeah. was what you went through in training or whether it was the heat you battled on the day of, no matter what, there's always a story. And so I love being able to see something that's a reminder. Actually, not one of my favorite things, I don't know that you have one in here, but I, in a lot of people's office, they keep like their marathon medal or a race medal or something as a memento. And it's always a great conversation starter. That's true. I think it's a, I think it's in my house. I have a rocket in here. You do have a rocket. I have here. a rocket and you have a little drone. A little drone. In a little drone. Yeah, so yes. That's those are the things I keep. Um, well, good stuff. Well, um, those are the questions that we've got for you guys this week. We'd love to know. Hit us up on Twitter at Connect Run Club, or you can find us on Facebook again at connectrunclub.com forward slash Facebook. Let us know if you'd prefer a medal or a shirt. And mm-hmm. if you've got it close, take a picture of either your shirt or your favorite medal. Yeah. would love we, to see your favorite We would medal. love to know. So, uh, Trey, any closing thoughts for this week? No, be sure. And uh, I love seeing uh, the races that you're running on the weekends and the training runs. Keep posting those. Uh, it was really neat to see. Uh, the coast to coast challenge that uh, that somebody hit this weekend. I wish I oh Mike Mike Mertens that's who it was. I remember that name now. But yes, if you've got any races coming up, we would love to cheer for you each weekend. So if you have a five k, ten k, half full, whatever, be sure and let the group know. We'd love to hear how you do. And uh, you guys are running some incredibly incredibly fast times out there. So you are obviously training training really well. That's good stuff. And uh, if you guys like what we're doing, uh, the number one way that you can support us uh, is if you just leave a rating and review on iTunes. And so on any, however you're listening to this, there should be a a way to get to the review section. And we'd love you guys to leave one, leave an honest one. If you hate us, let us know. Uh, But if you like us, really let us know. If you hate us, let him know. Don't let let me know. know. Don't let me know. (laughs) Send me an email to Trey at (laughs) connectbashministries.com. Yeah, I hope not. And uh, we'll be good. But all right, guys, so we'll be back. Um, actually, this Thursday, so this is coming out on a Tuesday, so we'll be back in just a couple of days for our next Q&A with Coach Trey. Until then, run connected. See you guys.